I'm Drew Stevenson, and this is a lecture about the case Dalton v. Specter, a U.S. Supreme Court case from 1994 about the reviewability of presidential action. This is for my administrative law course. So let's look at what happens in this case. The case is, um, before you get lost in the details here, the case is really about the closure of the historic Philadelphia Navy shipyard, which goes all the way back to the founding era of our country. Um, and this was uh, taking place during a round of base closures in the early 1990s at the end of the Cold War. Um, the base closure in practical terms meant the loss of jobs, sometimes thousands of jobs for the region. And if it was a historic Navy uh, a base that, that had some of the famous old ships and things like that, it could mean a pretty significant loss of tourism revenue. And the base closure decisions went through several steps, including approval by the president, which is what matters for our purposes um, for this case in our course. Now, we start with Congress, though. Uh, Congress passed the Defense Base Closure and Realignment Act of 1990, which provided for military base closures, basically in three phases um, or three rounds, following a pretty complicated selection process. So first, the Secretary of Defense, in conjunction with um, the Secretary of whatever branch of the armed forces uh, was involved, would do a study and come up with a recommendation of which bases to close. And they would, uh, the Secretary of Defense would actually use uh, selection criteria that had first been um, established or promulgated by through notice and comment rulemaking. And then those recommendations would be submitted to um, a panel called the Defense Base Closure and Realignment Commission, which was eight people who were appointed by the president and um, uh, subject to uh, Senate confirmation. And so this commission would hold hearings and um, prepare a report, and then it would prepare and uh, um, or submit its report to the president. And so we start with the Secretary of Defense, we go to a commission, the commission can make whatever changes they want and hold hearings, and then it goes to the president. And then the president had to decide whether to approve or disapprove um, uh, in the recommendations in their entirety or take no action at all. Um, in other words, the uh, president couldn't kind of pick and choose or make uh, any changes or recommendations. It was um, sort of an all or nothing approval or disapproval. And if approved, the proposal then went to Congress um, for sort of a streamlined um, approval vote and or disapprove an opportunity to over, uh, veto it. And in this case, Congress, Congress let the proposal stand, uh, overwhelmingly um, approved it. Now, John Dalton, uh, pictured here, was the Secretary of the Navy at the time. So he was actually responsible for implementing the closure of the Navy Yard. And he was also involved in the decision process at earlier stages. So he ended up as the first of several named defendants in the caption of the case. But for my students, keep in mind, the opinion really focuses on the reviewability of the president's decisions. Um, it, it's really not focused on uh, John Dalton at all. Um, and the specter is actually a senator. Uh, uh, senator Arlen Specter was the lead plaintiff, but there were a lot of other plaintiffs that, that were employees, employees unions at these bases. Um, in this case, the city of Philadelphia, right? This is a huge job uh, loss of uh, jobs for the city. Um, a bunch of the nearby states like New Jersey and Delaware um, had people who worked there or got economic benefit from the, the Philadelphia Navy shipyard and so forth. And so all of these people brought suit to enjoin the Secretary of the Navy from implementing President Bush's decision to close the Philadelphia Navy shipyard. So the president who approved these base closures was uh, the first Bush, George H.W. Bush. Um, and by the way, it's worth noting that Arlen Specter was a Republican senator and George Bush was a Republican president. So this was um, not sort of uh, not really a partisan uh, act or a lawsuit challenging the policies of a president from a different party. The, 
both of these guys are from the same party. Uh, but the suit claimed that the decision had been based um, on arbitrary reports, and uh, there were some other um, allegations thrown in too. The court here assumes, without deciding, that a statutory cause of action outside the APA is permissible in some unexamined uh, category of cases, which are uh, called non-statutory review. And there's some discussion in our case book, and we have another case after this one in the book about non-statutory review, um, which is a little bit of an obscure area of administrative law. But um, what the court does here is they proceed to analyze the case pursuant to normal final agency action and reviewability criteria. And as far as the holding, the court held that the reports to the president um, uh, were not a final agency action um, because the president had discretion to reject or ignore them. In other words, the commission itself, the, the proposal that it sent to the president wasn't a didn't count as a final agency action because it wasn't anything until the president approved it or uh, disapproved it, or the president might just kind of kill it and take no action. Um, and then the president, president's own decision uh, was in, in theory final, but it didn't count as a final agency action under the Administrative Procedure Act because the president is actually not an agency under the APA. Um, and often Dalton v. Specter is actually cited for that particular point that the president individually doesn't count as an agency um, under the Administrative Procedure Act, which means that uh, judicial review under the APA isn't available for something that the president unilaterally does as opposed to an agency. So we normally won't see the president listed as uh, the defendant in an APA action. Um, I pulled out a quote from uh, the opinion for those of you who really like to highlight in your case books. Uh, this kind of captures some of the court's essential reasoning. In sum, we hold that the actions of the secretary and the commission cannot be reviewed under the APA because they are not final agency actions. The actions of the president cannot be reviewed under the APA because the president is not an agency under that act. Where a statute commits decision-making to the discretion of the president, judicial review of the president's decision is not available. And I, I, that's a pretty significant statement. I hope you take a minute to let that sink in. And that concludes our lecture about the case Dalton v. Spector.